Forget full boost, it's full charge. Today we're going to look at owning an EV from the perspective of being a performance car enthusiast. I think the interior of a VN is the most marvellous Australian design ever, so I'm pretty easily pleased. <laughs> So Jesse, we thought we'd come down and speak to you about your Tesla because you're not the average owner. You're someone who's had a heavy performance car background, is used to driving eight, nine second cars. In fact, I think I filmed you at call to driving a seven second car once. Yes, you did. Yeah. I, have, I drove Adam Brogash's yeah. VK. So I do like the performance stuff. It's all very typical Turbo LS stuff. When we were looking for a new daily, for the wife and oh, it's kind of turned into my daily now because of fuel prices. <laughs> but when we were looking for a new daily, we just kept coming back to the Tesla, the Model 3 performance. We don't have a problem with electric vehicles. You don't get a lot for your money these days. So no, no, 50, we were saying off earlier, 50,000 50, in Australia in, if, in a performance car, there's not much choice anymore. No, there's not, there's not. Like realistically under a hundred grand, at the time we bought this, it was, it was still, they were still under a hundred. They've gone up over a hundred now. But when we bought this, it was essentially this or a Kia Stinger. Yeah. They were our options for a performance car under 100,000. That were. was a family four-door. Family yeah. four-door. You know, you, you can get into GDIs and Passats and things like that, but they're not a scratch on this performance-wise. No. So just, and they're smaller. So. so the basic stats are this. Out of the box, this is an 11-second car all day. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah mid-11s all day. It'll do it on a drag. It'll do it on a track. Zero to 100 in mid threes, which is... Mid threes for a family four door. Mm. And it's pretty repeatable, isn't it? Oh, like clockwork. Yeah. Like clockwork. It doesn't take much of a driver to get one of these to do what it needs to do. They're strong up until 40. So like even from a 40 roll, like <laughs> they go. A hundred roll, they're, they're a bit sad. Yeah, okay, Like yeah. I mean, like you roll up next to this at a hundred in just about any performance car and you'll probably get it. The instantaneous, the instantaneous of that is just a, that's and that's where it's at. Like the that straight that straight up hit, and it'll do it from a dig. You can't obviously build up brake. You know you can't. But I think like a W1 for example, which would probably be the hardest accelerating Australian car ever built. Yeah, you'd say roughly, it'd have to be. I think 4.1, 4.2. It's 3.3. Mm. So to 100, it's almost a second so, fast. Yeah, and those type of cars are inconsistent. inconsistent. They just That's, cannot get the power down. Exactly. Like, oh, you look, we'd all love to have a GDSR or something. Oh, I mean, I'd swap. And that's, that's, and, and that's not what I'm saying. Yeah, and that's exactly. what I try to explain to people. I'm not saying I'd have this over a GDS. Give me like a five-year-old GDS, you know, or a 16 model. It wouldn't bother me. Like, I love them. But it's just for what we're doing with it as a daily. This, I kind of got to have me cake and eat it too. I got, we got to get a brand new car that's under a hundred grand that I have fun in, that's cheap to run. Like there's just so many, there's so many thumbs up about them, so many upsides that people, they'll, people will slowly get it. You're not your average Tesla owner, meaning you haven't come from a Camry and jumped in this and been so wowed by it. So you're probably a bit more level headed to yeah. analyze the car from performance ang angle. Yeah. So. As you can see, the Kingswood's got eight and the Commodore was quite quick and this one will be quite quick as well. Um, that's a friend's car, but they're all, look, as far as performance goes, I've never had a new performance car. Yeah, yeah. Like yeah. I've never had, I don't really have a lot to gauge it to. I've driven a lot, the likes of VF GDSs and things like that. Um, but even when you compare one of them, like even a W1 on, on the stats, it wouldn't, hold, it wouldn't hold its own against one of these. And as you can see by the number plate, off a dig, I don't think anything's matching this. Yeah, it? well, nah, and, and again, consistency. Like, the, 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 I'm sure there's a plenty of cars out there that'll faster to the 660 foot, whether it be on the street or the track, but... The street's very different though. It is, Mass it is. Yeah. This works every time on the street. And like, I mean, we've all played with high performance rear wheel drive cars on the street, and then they're not overly easy to get down the road. Also, in, it's all wheel drive. If you're not familiar with Tesla's, this is an all wheel drive dual motor, so it has motors front and back. Yeah. In the wet, it's still gonna lay down yeah, serious tires. Yeah, even, even in the driveway, that dirt driveway that you come down to get in here, it will not turn the tire. It's got 
The traction control in it, I don't know whether it's a modern performance thing or a uh, electric car yeah. thing, but the traction control is what all us drag racers dream of. Yeah. Like if you could get something like them, like the VN, to, uh, uh, for the traction control to work like one of these, you'd be unstoppable. They're super smart and it almost feels like they're ahead of you the whole time. How long have you owned this car? Um, five months, six months. So, no, yeah. a bit longer than that. And you're obviously charging it at night on the solar panels? Solar panels on the roof, charging your vehicle for free overnight. Don't have solar panels. And, and, that's, and that's a big thing too. Like it costs us, I do four to 500 Ks a week and it costs us $18 a week to run. Like we've done the numbers, we've looked at our power bills before and after. But hang on, hang on, hang on. How are you gonna drive to Alice Springs on one, on one charge. It's not, it can't be done, so why would you even buy this car? Horses for courses, yeah. Um, I've got a territory for that. You know, take it from someone who has an electric car, they're not gonna work for everyone. No. But, neither's a Honda Civic. You know, uh, you know, I hear people go, oh, that's not gonna tow the caravan across the Nullarbor. Will it tow a trailer? It's not gonna tow your boat. It can tow a 550 kilo trailer. I've got a friend that tows his jet ski with one, but I wouldn't bother. You know, you buy, you need to tow something, you buy a tow vehicle. You need a small hatchback, you buy a small hatchback. You need a family sedan that you can fit four people in and it goes all right. You would assume these would actually tow a small box trailer. Look how talky these things are. Yeah, it, oh, it wouldn't even phase it, would it? It probably wouldn't, but the Look, power... It would, can, it would use power though, wouldn't yeah. it? Yeah, so like I've even noticed, and like I'll point out all the flaws with one. Mm. You put four full-size adults in it, you see that you see the life of the battery change, but that's no different to a petrol car. You fully load a petrol car. They don't go. It's gonna, it, it, won't, it won't move and it'll drink more petrol. It's just, there's no such thing as free energy, yeah? So it's just a different type of energy. So people say all the technology and stuff's all wanky or, you know, oh, yeah, what do you yeah, need yeah. that for? But it's the perfect daily. But until like, you've had it, you don't know what it's like to have. Oh, like, yeah, like I jumped out of a, I had a PX Ranger before this and it was nothing but dramas. Bought a, it was a new car, I had, it had DPF <laughs> issues, it had transmission issues. Yeah. So it didn't, that didn't fill me with confidence either. Um, we've got a Territory, which we've had since brand new, and that's been an ec excellent car. Yeah. But it's got no technology, it's very basic. These have it all. You can monitor all your cabin temperatures. You can turn climate on. You can turn heated seats on all from your phone. The charging thing is the, is that, the that's best the thing most, about it. That is probably the most polarizing point that you see online about where can you charge it? There's no charging stations. We genuinely only ever charge it at home. Like I, like I said to you earlier, I can take you to a fast charger station. I've used it once mm. and it's an official Tesla yeah. one. I use it once. I was going out for a cruise with the boys and it was a bit low on battery. And that does make a difference to performance. You know, that, yeah. that's one, uh, I guess one of the downsides is the flatter the battery gets, you physically can feel that the car is losing. It's like, it'd be like almost if the car's getting lower in fuel, the engine output comes down. Well, yeah, exactly right. Which, yeah. which doesn't happen. Which doesn't happen, no. Unless you've got no fuel in it. <laughs> no, but, but it's kind of relative to that. that yeah, 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 yeah. So, you know, I've only used a fast charger once. It is cheap even when you do use it in comparison to fuel. But we charge up at home. I don't have solar panels. I'm on a normal power bill, I think we're with Lumo, or like I don't even know. Like whoever we're with, Lumo or Simple, e Dirt, simple Energy. Dirty electricity, yep. another, another downside off the EV. Um, you know, we charge it, we plug it in, and you get up every morning and your car's full. It's like plugging in a phone. You, no tend, to, you, tend, to, you tend to top up a phone. If, you, if your phone's a bit down, you think oh, I'm going out for five hours, and you happen to notice your phone's on 30%, you might top it up for half an hour and, you take, and it charges a fair bit and you take off. It's almost like the car's like that, isn't it? It is. So like the range anxiety and stuff people stress about, there's literally nothing to stress about. Like in most people's cases, they're not gonna work for everyone. If you've got to drive five hours to work or five or six hours for work every day, it's probably not the car for you. Mm. So like I said, I've been here once ever. Like it's literally five minutes from my house. I've never once been somewhere and been like, oh, where do I need to find a charge station? When we go to Heathcote, and, that's, well, and, and for Heathcote from here, how many k's would that be? So Heathcote there and back's about three, uh, I think it's about 400 roughly. This will do 450. If you do the maths, it's like, just make it. But the caravan park just down the road from Heathcote Racetrack has a charger there. There's fast chargers in Bendigo mm. as well. So you plug it in, 
and it's all the car's linked to your credit card yeah so i think last time i was here i charged it from like 70 percent to 100 percent and it cost me about nine bucks like it wasn't it wasn't drastic like i think even a full charge might only cost you 20 bucks so it's saying i've got 408 kilometers on 85 percent charge and it stops at 463 that's yeah it's like saying that's as much as it'll charge your battery yeah charge limit 463 another cool thing if you're a muso it's got built-in spotify comes the car comes with its own spotify account one of the biggest gripes you see with evs online is battery life and how much they cost to replace this tesla's got an eight year warranty at eight years they the guarantee is it will have 80 percent is it they call it recharge or capacity? I, be, I believe so. I believe it's 80%. Don't quote me as gospel, but I believe it's 80% after eight years. Eight year warranty. Yeah. And then... How many cars have an eight year warranty? Well, that's it. And then they say, you know, it may need to be replaced after... People ask me that all the time. Like, what are you going to do in 10 years? I don't plan on owning it for 10, 10 years. years yeah. Like, it's... it's it's the it's but I wouldn't own any new any car, new new car, car for, 10 for ten years. Like whether it be the Ranger I had that had nothing but problems. Like I thought I, I was that panicked of about owning that car outside of warranty. The other thing, the technology grows at such a fast rate, batteries will get better. Yeah. But like what what's sold today will be different in another five or six, seven, eight years. It's that's more my concern than anything else. My concern is the technology by the time I go to trade it something newer and cooler will be out and they'll just be like yeah well we're not giving you bugger all for trading because that's old technology now that's probably more my concern with the whole thing than anything because we all know like you buy a laptop six months later it's rubbish it's rubbish i feel it's probably going to be the same with evs i believe when like you know if nissan get on board and toyota get on board and they all start doing evs there will be somewhat of an arms race like there always is so we've just pulled up at a random tesla charging station at a shopping center another lady's just finished her charging another tesla's turned up so they're actually the other actually the other main thing is you turn up and you can't you can't get a bay like there's six bays here there's three cars she's about to leave you don't see a lot of teslas on the road no I, I, right now is probably the best time ever to own one yeah i'm seeing a lot of what model threes yep i, I don't know do you, do you know if they still sell a Model S? You can't get a Model S in Australia now from what I know. Because um, the production's focused on this model, isn't it? That's right. So um, when I went to pick this up, I was pretty blown away. It was in a warehouse and it was just a sea of white Model 3s. Now, I'd love to know the percentage of performance ones because I could, there wasn't another one in there. There would have been, really? 200, base models. There would have been 200 Teslas in there and I could not see a single other performance one. They stand out the carbon fibre lip and the bigger wheels. And I couldn't see another one in there. When I see people talk about the Model S Plaid and it runs 9 O's and they say boring. It's not impressive. I'm telling you now, none of them have ever been in a car that runs 9 0 because. It goes 100, over 150 miles an hour on the quarter and people are saying that is boring. Are you serious? Yeah. You could be deaf and blind and that'd still be exciting. <laughs> you know, like. I, I don't. I think when people actually write stuff like that, 100% it's admitting. They've never been anything in anything that fast. It's crazy to say stuff like that. Yeah. And I'm not all about it. Like, if, if, if you'd never catch me selling all the other stuff to buy an EV. Yeah. Because I, I will be the first to admit that they're, from, they're more fun. Mm. But as far as a daily is concerned, I wouldn't, ra I wouldn't want to drive anything else at this point. And, and going forward, you'll probably find our next think, car will be electric. I think you'll find a lot of households too. Like, people are so threatened by having an electric car, they think it's taking over this. Mm. And why we came down to film Jesse was we wanted to show you can have both. They can coexist. I took another look at it, I changed my mind. And, I, and I'm into everything. Like if it's fast, I'm down. Like it doesn't matter what it is, bikes, cars. I give the Rotary boys a bit of grief, but at the end of the, at the, <laughs> end of the day, they are, they are still a fast car and I'll respect them. So it's, it's, that's what I'm into, that's what sold me. Mm. To me, like the base model Tesla, like a Tesla that's not fast to me is almost like, why would you bother? But saying that, a base model Tesla will still do, I think, zero to 100 in, I think, mid sixes. Is that that's right? right. Is yeah, it, still is, faster. Is even, it, quick, is it yeah. quicker than that? No, it's about that, I think. I'll be honest, I never really looked. You just went straight for I the I just top went model. straight for the performance simply because I thought if I'm getting an electric car, it's got to have the party but, trick. But yeah. why I bring up the base model, it still isn't slow. It still no. it would drive quite well. If yeah. you had a petrol car and it was the same speed, you'd go, oh, this goes well. Yeah. 
the other thing I used to be curious when the, when Tesla only had the Model S before this, I was always like, it's it's a it's a big heavy car. I mean, not that this is light either, but oh, how do they handle? I was actually watching a video yesterday about the new GR Corolla in the States, and they had it against they were comparing it to a Golf R. What was slightly quicker around the track on their leaderboard? This. It was it was a tiny bit quicker, and look, it's probably wouldn't probably have the cornering speed, and it's going to make it up with just sheer grunt, but. It's still a fast car in any aspect you can drive it. It's not, feel, it's not just a straight line warrior, right? They feel, that's right. They feel, to me, they feel sloppy in the corners, but I wouldn't know how to put a car in a corner, I'll be honest with you. When you look at all the track times, like whether it's Top Gear or Fifth Gear or the Nürburgring or all them, these are always quick. These are doing very well. They're look, very quick. I know they're making up a lot of time on the, on, on, on the straighter sections of the track, like, but you know, it has its strengths and these other cars are making up in the corners. And like you said, it depends on what you're after. But yeah. As a daily, it's, I'm, it's such I'm a, a great car. So like you'll fit, you'll fit adults in the back, like they're obviously not there, you won't. That's where the kid's seat is, but you'll fit adults in the back comfortably. They've got a surprising amount of storage simply because, well, they don't have your fuel tank and your engine. Yeah. For example, the boot's quite good, but then you've got, get them out, but you've got this giant hole underneath there. That would be comfortable for me there. I could drive that pretty comfortably. It's got there. um, it's actually for a, it's got a fairly sleek roof line. It's actually got heaps of headroom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm, like, for, for reference, I'm six about six foot tall. You're you're taller. Yeah, six two. Yeah. You know the interior. There's there's things that take time to get used to driving them, not having to use the brake pedal. So the the, the hardest thing I feel that is the whole coast thing. That, that. So when I get off it, no, yeah. See it's what quite I mean? A, it's quite aggressive It too. is, it is. So wow. you've got to adjust the way, because... And I'm, I'm going to put my foot on the brake like it's going to roll away, and it's not. It's not, it's, it just stops, yeah. It's, it's, it's trippy as. Oh, that's like a vegan leather. Yeah, yeah, typical Californian design car. So yeah, you couldn't, you couldn't very well have an electric car with um, real cow in it, could you? The one thing they get criticised is build quality. The, the, the Model S's were, right? They've come a long way. I, I remember sitting in the Model S actually being quite horrified at how, how, yeah. how flimsy things were. This is a very different car, actually. It does surprise me there's no heads up. I, that surprises like, me I'm too. I kind of feel like I'm glancing at that. Yeah. Like, I know I haven't got the cruise on, but... Yeah. No, that surprised me too. I, it's the first thing I asked my mate when he bought one. I said, where's the heads up display? He goes, it doesn't have one. And I thought that was odd. Like, I'm hopeless with tech stuff too. Yeah. Like, I'm a bit of a tech idiot. But... They make the, these are like an iPhone. Yeah, you know anyone can use them. <laughs> like they're real. Like even your mum and dad will have no dramas. <laughs> it is very different. There's not one button on the car. I know a lot of screens are moving. I know a lot of cars, sorry, are moving to touch screens and stuff. But a lot of them will still have controls. Yeah, basic controls. Yeah. I find that. That's a bit... it. Was weird. It weirded me out at mm. first as well. I think the interior of a VN is the most a marvelous Australian design ever. So I'm pretty easily pleased. <laughs> You forget there's no transmission here, right? Yeah. That's a look, no at how, look how deep that is. That runs right in. You could put a huge bottle of water in there. The other thing worth mentioning is the cold kills it, yeah? Yeah, the performance temperature. wise, performance wise on a cold day, it's like you've pulled all the timing out of it. Bat so, batteries love heat. Yeah. Like on a hot day it flies, which is totally backwards, backwards yeah. to what we're all used to. Had any uh, speeding tickets? Uh, in this, I already have had one, but in my defense, it was on autopilot, which is, which is autopilot. And my problem was, is the car didn't see a sign and didn't, it slowed down didn't enough. slow down enough. So it will prompt you to put your hands on the wheels and stuff, um, which is, you know, safe practice, but it's essentially driving itself now. Um, this is so much lower than most cars. You the visibility is like, yeah, excellent. Visibility is very good. Yeah, yeah. like you really good. Way more. Like a lot of modern cars, like you think if you don't have a reverse camera on them to reverse, you're screwed. Jesse, we know you from this stuff, certainly not this. So this is your HZ you've had for quite a while. And yeah. last time I saw it, it was a different color. Yeah, so this was like the patinaed crusty style thing, but it was a Wangaratta car and it ended up in Geelong and we're a lot closer to the bay, a lot closer to the ocean and we found that that patina was quickly getting worse. Worse. Yeah. Um, so it did need paint, it was always gonna happen. 
I broke the crankshaft in it five years ago and it just snowballed from there. So it's the only thing left from the original build essentially would be the shell and the four doors. Everything else is kind of gone. So The front end has gone in with this setup. Yeah, yep. so Castle main tube, front end. It's got mirror image 42s on it now. Still the cast iron block that it used to have. You don't see mirror images that often, to be honest. No, they, look, they're getting more popular now. Um, they're just really good for the OCD. Like yeah. they just, and as far as like from fabricating, they're, they're, they're way nicer as it's well. It's a nice collector. Yeah, I, I made them ones. And again, it's, it's the beauty of being able to do things yourself. So I made the manifolds, they're steam pipe. Oop, they're steam pipe. I made all them myself. And look, it's still a work in progress. It's just, there's been other things on the go. You know, I built the shed and moved into this house and built the shed. And as you can see, it's quite the shed. I'm, um, I'm seriously envious of this. Yeah, so I, I done the shed mostly myself with the help of mates. We, you know, I bought, built the, bought the kit and put it up and it's just all time. What's the goal with this one in terms of power or anything? Have you got, have you got a Look, goal or is it just I, it'll make or it, make? It keeps or? moving, yeah. like as, as they always do. Like, you know, with a car that's been in the build for so long, what was considered quick or competitive then isn't considered quick and competitive now. I'm a big fan. I watch a lot of no prep stuff. I think, I, I find it really exciting. I find that, you know, like the small tire no prep stuff really exciting and I'd absolutely love for it to kick off here in Australia because that's kind of what I'd like to build this car to. I've got street cars. I'm happy for this car to become a little bit more leaning towards the race side of things. That doesn't bother me. Um, but it's just, it's about getting the events to suit the car. Like it could never be competitive on a 275 with that running gear. It what, what, what size engine is it? It's a 403 cube. So it's just a, like a truck block, LQ9 truck block. It's got factory heads on it, like a factory LS3 head. That uh, It's a Higgins head though. Um, it's got, you know, Dragon Slayer crank. It, it's, it's essentially as good it's as a, a cast iron truck block's ever gonna get. It's gonna make power. Yeah, <laughs> look, it should make, it depends, you know, it could probably make 13, 14, 1500 wheel horsepower. It's just uh, how long will it stay together for? We'll find out, <laughs> we'll find out. They're a really good car, to, they're a good platform. And much like the G-bodies in the States, that's probably yeah. their equivalent. And you see a lot of people racing G-bodies and stuff over there because you can fit a lot in them. Same as Fox bodies. Yeah. Like Fox bodies have massive engine bays. You know, they're really popular as well. It's just so, it's like, it's so effortless. And I was into RC cars a while ago. I had a lot of like fast remote control cars. And it's just like that, it's instant. And, and then you've got the crowd with the remote control cars that are like, nothing's like a petrol remote control car, mate. Like, <laughs> it's the same thing. Like, oh, that's no fun. Like, go to the racetrack to watch electric RC cars race. That's boring, you know. Like, you get the same in everything. People just love the... Jeez. There you go. It's a nice, quiet car. Yeah. Like a modern car. You don't realise how fast you're going. And this, this, just, this just exaggerates with something shocking. And, and I try to explain that to people. I've had fast cars like I own other cars that are fast but not like this like they can't I can't drive it to work every day and eat my breakfast going down the highway in any of my other cars you know what I mean like it's just totally different no it won't run an eight and a quarter mile but the cars that I do have that can do that kind of stuff are pretty useless as cars I think though I, I mean I appreciate you giving us a drive of the car I don't understand why people are bagging EVs when they clearly haven't been in them. Yeah. yeah. It comes across like they're just threatened by them. I think they're threatened that it's going to take away what they love. Yeah. And look. And I'm threatened by that as well. Yeah, like, I, I'm in that boat with everyone. Like, I mean, if they ban performance cars like what we're all into, it's going to be devastating for me. Like, it's been essentially my entire Sorry. life. Cars are what I do. Yeah. So if they turn around and make them illegal, I'm going to be as hurt as anyone else in the car scene. I, I actually think too, because of the country we live in, it's so scarcely populated and such a big country, the EV revolution will, for a Western country, will be one of the least- Last. It, last, exactly. We're going to be. All the stuff that goes on in Europe, it's been going on for years, it's barely even started here. Yep. People complain about it, but we have such a different lifestyle here. 
I think what's going to happen is over the next five or six years, it'll all become very, very obvious that it's completely unrealistic for this net zero shit by 2030. Oh, that's outrageous. Like my, my power bill went up 30%. We used 30% more power since purchasing this car. Yep. So essentially if three people in my street buy an EV, it's like another house getting built. Say if everyone in your street had Teslas and put them on charge at the same time, oh. they don't charge as fast, do they? Well, that's right. Well, during, we get three 40 degree days and we get rolling blackouts because people are running their air cons. Look, the government have got to be completely delusional to think that we're going to all be able to charge EVs at night. It's just ridiculous. And people need to understand that it's ridiculous. At night, off the solar panel. Yeah. Jesse, thanks for showing us the car. The technology is unreal. All you EV haters, all I can say is just go take a look at one. Don't be so close-minded. Jesse is a car nut, as you can see. He's got this as a daily. It doesn't mean he can't have his eight second HZ. Yeah, look, it's, it's people have just got to just drive one. Before you comment, just drive one. Because I was a little bit the same, I'm not going to lie. I wasn't a hater, but I was a little bit sceptical. But as soon as I drove one, everything changed. They just make a lot of sense. Make heaps of sense. And who knows, maybe full charge will become a reality with our new Tesla. Don't forget to order your track merchandise. We've got an awesome new 25 years of full boost. Yes, that's right, 25 years we've been doing this. Old school boost gauge. We've got these in uh, t-shirts and hoodies, so get on it at shop.fullboost.com.au. One of these is a daily, you know, like a BFGDS is your weekender. I couldn't agree more. Yeah. Like, it's kind of the best of both worlds.